The Elder Scrolls Online is full of countless tasks and activities, but nothing in-game lets you know what's the most beneficial for you to earn experience, gold, champion points, and ultimately what's the best use of your time. This guide aims to help the newer returning player understand what you should do, why you should do it, and how to make the most out of your time each day in the Elder Scrolls Online. Welcome back gang, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And whether you have five minutes or five hours, here are the top 10 things we suggest you focus on in ESO, and most importantly, why? I'm excited to announce our sponsor for this video, and it's NordPass from the makers of NordVPN. NordPass is a fully featured password manager that simplifies your life, and you can use my code NordPass.com slash DeltiasGaming for a two-year premium plan, plus one month free, and a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're like me, I had outdated, insecure Microsoft Excel spreadsheet where I saved all my old passwords. I'd scroll through 100 different sites just to find out they were outdated, passwords didn't work, and they definitely weren't secure. Or for gaming, I have three Elder Scrolls Online accounts and managing those passwords and logins is an absolute nightmare. NordPass solves this problem by saving your passwords in a hassle-free program. NordPass also detects passwords stored in your browser already and allows them to be imported so you won't need to spend countless hours slogging through sites. You can use NordPass on up to six devices including mobile. So secure yourself now and help support me using my code NordPass.com slash Delta is gaming. You'll get a great trusted tool. To secure your passwords today. Now back to the video. Starting our number 10 spot, and that's daily logins. Logging in daily and collecting the free reward is the simplest daily in ESO. You get gray rewards that progressively get better. Sometimes you even 100,000 gold, which is very nice along with experience potions, food, Telvar, which is a PVP currency, and more. When you first log in, you'll be prompted for a login reward. You can check your progress via the crown store, and a notification will pop up in your chat that you have a reward to be claimed. So this screen here is from the Crown Store. So if I jump out here and I just go to my menu, Crown Store, and I go to this tab here, it's the daily rewards. So we're in the month of August. It talks about how long you have, how many hours the cooldown is, and what the prize or reward is. And you can see they progressively get better and better. Something to note on these individual rewards is you want to claim them on the character you intend to use them on. One in particular is Alliance Points. Alliance Points is a PvP experience, if you will, type thing. Right now, as recording this video, we have a PvP event going on. So to earn Alliance Points increases these two skill lines. Why this is important is if people want to level their skill line on a particular character, maybe stamina to get resolving vigor, maybe a healer to get barrier, you need to claim that daily reward on that correct character you want to level this up. Very, very useful for a low level character, specifically stamina, who wants to get resolving vigor right away, but doesn't necessarily want all the PvP drama. Moving on to our number nine, and that's mount upgrades. Tamriel is an enormous place, and every day you can feed your horse, every 20 hours in fact. At around level 10, you should get a free horse via the level up advisor, this Sorel horse. So you just need to level up to maintain and earn a horse. Now you can come to the stable master here and feed your horse every 20 hours, and you'll see this window here. Cost 250 gold to feed it, and you have speed, obviously increases your speed, stamina, which allows you to take more hits while you're on top of it. Consider this kind of like a PvP ish trait and then carrying capacity typically what i focus on is the obvious speed first and then carry capacity if i'm a pve -er, and stamina if i'm a pvp -er, because you will get knocked off your horse and pretty much killed very easily if you don't level this up another tip for you while you're leveling um, outside of the horse is this continuous attack passive coming from the assault alliance war you can do an introduction quest into cyrodiil at at level 10 you're gonna get a male you can go in there and do a very simple introduction quest that gives you two skill points and will also lead you to level three in Assault War. Continuous attack gives you major gallop, increasing your mount speed by 30% at all times. So while you're working on feeding that horse and getting it ranked up, make sure to do the intro quest. Take the point in this passive. It will make your life a lot better in Tamriel. Next up, we have number eight, and that's trait research. Really important to check on your character or characters every time you log into the game. So trait research, we go over here and we check out woodworking and we go to research. There's going to be one of nine traits in each specific armor, weapon, jewelry, whatever it may have you. You have four different ones to choose from woodworking, blacksmithing and clothing, along with 
jewelry crafting. So there's a lot to manage here. There is a helpful add-on that I use on PC called Craft Store. So what this add-on does is it gives you a little identification sign here that divines can be researched. So you don't deconstruct and get rid of useful item pieces in your inventory. What I highly recommend doing is picking one character as a crafter and primarily focus on researching the traits on that individual character. You can do other ones, but you need to either have the item in your inventory on you on your person or in the bank. You simply come up here and you start researching. Now, number one I would focus on for a new player is training. This increases experience, which is extraordinarily helpful, whether it's the weapons or the body pieces. You can't do jewelry. And I have a whole list of what you should prioritize, armor, jewelry, and weapons on my website. Check the link in the description below. But I would prioritize this number one. And then you just start learning the traits. You can see we only have zero of one. So you need to start banking and saving a lot of skill points to increase this up as well. Right here you see reduce research time by 5%. So you can actually max this passive out and go back to clothing here. And now we can research three. The timer gets longer by how many traits you already have researched. So I always prioritize the lowest amount to the highest amount. So I'll scroll here and see what I actually have on my inventory on my person. And if I have one that only has two traits research and the rest of them are four, I'll use that. No fancy spreadsheet or anything, but it's just a simple way to do it. And it looks like we have one that is only two traits right here. So I'm going to research that to get it up to three. And you can see I have 16 hours left. I got a couple other slots, so I'm just going to pick and choose a couple to match them up. Let's say you really want divines on your armor. You don't have it on your person and you can't get a hold of it. Guild buddy, you don't know how to get a hold of it. You just come to these traders here and you can sort whether you're using an add-on or not by specific traits themselves. Oftentimes you can find some that are actually dirt cheap, not really expensive like this at random traders. There's also a helpful website, Tamriel Trade Center, that will give you a list and then you can find the ones you need to research without having to sweat it and run around the entirety of Tamriel trying to get it. So again, make sure you log in, check your character's traits, prioritize the ones that you don't have unlocked. And remember, the more traits you have, the longer it is. So try to keep them even if you can. Look through a guild store to get ones that you're missing or even a guild bank or a friend have you craft one. It doesn't matter how you obtain it, what quality it is. All it matters is you have it in your inventory or you have it in your bank. Moving on, and that's number seven, Daily Job Broker. There's a bunch of different daily job brokers in the Elder Scrolls line sprinkled throughout the entire world zones. Specifically, DLC and chapter zones are the most lucrative because oftentimes their quests are tied to large regular in-game events with special rewards, event tickets, style motifs, and items. Usually you want to prioritize the most recent chapter and or DLC because everyone wants the style motifs and they want the new gear sets coming from them. So right now, as I'm making this video, it's High Isles, but one that a lot of people are still working on here is in Fargrave or the Deadlands. This is tied to Markins. It's a mythic, and you have to get the lead by doing the daily job brokers, and you can only do two per character more characters you have, the more chances you're going to have of doing this. So you can see you just grab them right here. Every zone has them, and they're looking like the blue little arrows that will tell you their daily jobs. Look over here in your journal, it'll say a little hourglass repeatable. That's how you know it's a daily and you can repeat this. So this right here is how you get one of the best item sets in the game, Markin's Ring of Majesty. And you can also get really other good rewards. And usually when they do events, there's always a tie to this. So I'm just going to go do one real quick. All right, so we got it complete. We're going to go to Daily Job Broker here, turn it in, and we get a Deadlands Reward Coffer or the coffer for whatever zone we're in. So we pop this puppy open and bang, we got a motif. Nice. And then a couple item sets along with a style material for that specific zone. So again, the most lucrative will always be the most current, latest, and greatest zone. But you can do this for item sets that you want to get a hold of. It's decent gold and decent XP, and it's very quick to get these done. Now, number six, and that's Daily Guild Quest. If you're into companions, there's four total. I have Isabel here with me. Their most impactful skill line can only be leveled by doing these dailies. So you have Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild, and Undaunted. You can see it tells you to even unlock the skill line, you have to do one of these quests. So you have to come to your main area uh, depending on your faction. So mine is Daggerfall Covenant, Stormhaven, Wayrest. Ebonheart Pack here is Deshaun, Hornhold, uh, Aldemary Dominion is Grotwood, 
Elden Root. So you come here to the Fighter's Guild quest, and you're going to see that same blue marker. And you're going to grab this thing. I'll take care of it. Typically, these are very easy. Destroy three Dark Anchors for Fighter's Guild in East March. We're going to go ahead and do that and turn it in and get a nice little XP boost or even unlock the skill line. All right, so we did the three Tolmans. Now we're going to turn this quest in here. And boom, we gained the skill line for our companion. Also, we got a little box, which doesn't really help us that much. It's some junk that you can use to decon and do traits. Now we can go back to our companions menu. And you can see we're starting to unlock this thing. So at 6 in 10, some really good skills here, at least at 6 in pretty much every single one. Another helpful tip for you is if you use the event tickets, you can get 12 from various events, have different guides on events for ESO. You can actually use this to level up your companion's skill line. So combined with doing your um, daily, along with using some extra event tickets, if you earn those and not interested in the items they have, you can level up this pretty quick and max out your companions, making them much, much more useful if you have all of these three maxed out. Now, number five, Endeavors. You're probably wondering how I have this disgustingly awesome mount and polymorph. Well, I didn't use a dime of real world money. I used the Endeavor system. In case you don't know, ESO has a crown store. You can buy crowns, do loot crates, or whatever you want to call them, and get gems. But actually, you don't have to do that. You have Seals of Endeavors, and you can use them by earning this in-game currency called Seals of Endeavors. So you come into the group menu here, and you go into Endeavors. It's broken down into two different categories, daily and weekly. You can see the amount of currency you earn. So you have a bunch of different ways to do these and you can complete three so today if i were to complete my endeavors i'd get 45 and i get to pick the ways that i want to do them and now you go into the weeklies which are the big ones you only have to complete one so i did imperial city since i'm a pvp sweat already got that one done so if i were looking at this i'm not going to go pvp right now but those kill two public dungeon bosses craft one item and deconstruct uh 10 items on a woodworking table it also tells you the reset timer up here and you can go to the seals endeavor store which is essentially the same thing as the crown crate store just with a different currency so you can go over here crown crate and you have a whole bunch of different options this one that i got specifically was sixteen thousand. So I didn't even focus on Endeavors, to be completely honest. I just played the game, and over the course of roughly a year, I earned enough to buy what I consider the coolest mount in the game. So focus on Endeavors. You want to earn stuff and not have to pay stuff. Next up, we have Pledges, and these are found, again, in your capital city. So I'm in Deshaun for the Ebonheart Pack, and you're going to see a little icon here, kind of Undaunted Enclave. So we walk over here, and there's three particular Pledge Givers. So let's just grab them here. This one here... It, dark shade caverns consider this kind of like the base game ones these are extraordinarily easy to pick up so we're going to pick up these quests and you complete one including the hard mode and you're going to earn two keys or you can, can just complete it outright and get one key so what are the keys used for well they're used for monster shoulders which are very hard to get because you have to random rng get them so the second one here is another similar very very easy one so those two are very easy to get i recommend doing those on hard mode and then you have the dlc one so this i can't even pronounce their name the dlc one fang layer so not a whole lot of groups are going to be able to do fang layer hard mode at least if they're randoms so what i typically recommend people do is at least focus on these two ones especially if you're a beginner Usually everyone's done the dungeon so many dang times that hard mode basically I can solo half of them. The DLC one's a bit tricky. Maybe you try as your group and see how it goes on veteran hard mode, but if it's just too tough, just try to complete it and at least get one key. Now an extra tip for you is you can see all of these different monster helms. Again, I have a gazillion builds on my website, so come check them out on what you should do and why. You're going to want to start stockpiling your keys. You can use RNG ones that give the whole loot table here a chance, or you can do specific ones that have a 50-50 shot. So the 50-50 shot is really good if you're looking at just a particular one, but you might spend 20 undaunted keys and not even get the item you're going after. As a beginning player, what I did when I started over on PCU, I saved up about 20 keys, 
and I got into a vendor like this one here that had a bunch of basic base game ones that were really useful. So Falcon Scoria, Narayaneth, Iceheart, Grothar, Tremor Scale, Pirate Skeleton, Salines, and Stormfist. There's about four or five that are really good both in PvE and PvP. Then I spent about 10 of them on this one. And then I got the specific shoulder and I went and ran the dungeon. Versus running the dungeon, getting the helm, and then trying to like parse out the shoulder with 30 keys. Same thing with the DLC dungeons. I saved up about 10 or 20 of them. And there's a huge loot table here. But spending about 10 of them, I got some of the juicy ones that I wanted. And then I went and ran the dungeon and got the helm. This way, literally day one, you can get a really good monster helm if you complete just those two basic entry ones on veteran and hard mode. That gives you four keys. Then you can come over here to the easy peasy one, spend four keys, and then go find the actual monster helm you want. So Engine Guardian for resource sustain, absolutely amazing. Crag, not a bad DPS setup. Blood Spawn for PvP, uh, Scourge Harvest for PvP, Mauve Inferno, really good for Magic Sorks and so on. That's a really easy tip that you're gonna wanna prioritize doing every day because these item sets are incredibly powerful as a two piece, whether you're a new player, beginner, end game, PvE or PvP. Moving on, that's Daily Battlegrounds. So Daily Battlegrounds, you, know, you have a group and activity finder here that you go with your key. And we go to Battleground specifically. So there's a solo random battleground and there's a group battleground. 99% of people watching this are gonna do solo randoms. You can see there's a massive amount of XP to gain from doing this. Battlegrounds are a PvP instant space about a 15 minute with a bunch of different game modes. Deathmatch, uh, Domination, Capture Relic, Chaos Ball, and Crazy King. So you queue for this and you'll pop it up in about two to three minutes. The thing to know for the average player doing this, a beginner, it's not going to be that difficult. You might get slayed, but you need to come in first or second to get the reward. So play objectives. You don't care about being God's gift to PvP right away. You care about the massive amount of XP that it gives you. It also gives you this premium uh, battleground supply, which isn't that good. So the actual rewards aren't that good, but there is something that you earn here called Arena Gladiator Proofs, which are quite useful. So I'm in Cyrodiil actually, inside the instance-based PvP thing that you get with your Alliance War, the L key on PC. You just queue up for a random one here. There's a vendor called War Researcher, and this War Researcher sells you actually really cool costumes, cosmetics, also has a really interesting pet, some cool outfits, and most people don't even know this that do battle rounds over and over. So you can save those Arena Gladiator Proofs and redeem them here for really, really cool items. So you get really good XP, and if you save up those proofs, you can get some items, sell them and or consume them. And it's really good to do every day because at least you get the XP, which pretty much everyone needs. We're on to number two, and that's random normal dungeons. Similar to Battleground Dailies, it gives you a massive boost to XP, and that scales with your level. The thing about Dungeon Finder is it's extraordinarily quick to do. So if you take a look at specific dungeons, you have normal and then you have veteran. Veteran obviously being a lot harder. What you need to do to complete these is basically just kill the last boss. You don't technically have to kill everything and loot everything and destroy every little critter in there. So you can run and sprint sometimes in some of these dungeons, the base game like Fungal Grotta 1, Spindle, you can get them done in roughly two minutes. And the loot on top of the enormous amount of XP is really good. So I just completed one on another character. If we pull it up here, uh, we're going to go ahead and take this. So we got soul gems, drummer frame. You can see we have a staff of endurance. You can actually use willpower, endurance, or agility, and it scales with your level. So when you're leveling, this is going to give you a two-piece item set that is extraordinarily good at the beginning of the game. But really, we're doing it for the transmutation geodes. This is the end game currency that pretty much everyone wants to get a hold of because it allows you to change your gear sets. So you can see we get 10 transmutes for running it along with the 100,000 experience. And it took me two minutes to do Fungal Grotto 1. Now, some caveats with this um, you want to make sure you know. So what I've done in the past when these random normals is group up with a low level character. 
The reason why a low-level character or someone without ESO Plus is, you're limited to these base game dungeons, which are very, very easy. You're not going to get Layer of Marsalok, Stone Gardens, The Dread Cellar, March of Sacrifice, these really long, super long, time-consuming dungeons so you can blow through them. Right around level 10 or 12, you're going to get Fungal Grotto 1, Banish Cells 1, and a Dark Shade 1. Those things can be blown through in 5 minutes no matter what your group DPS is. The higher level you get with your overall group, it just is the last person in your group. The lowest level is what factors into which specific dungeons you can do. So you can make an incredible use out of your time. Similar to Battlegrounds, these can be done on per character basis. So this is why it's so advantageous to do these random normals. No real benefit from running veteran. Another thing about random normals in comparison to veteran is filling out your sticker book. So if we go to set items, right? And we look at um, dungeons here. Let's go to Elden Hollow. You can see Elden Hollow here. I have pretty much everything filled out and it doesn't matter if you collect these gear sets, which you use transmutes to reassemble, it just matters if you collect them. Doesn't matter normal, doesn't matter veteran. So when you're doing these random normals, you're getting transmutes, you're filling out your sticker book, you're earning a ton of experience points, you're learning the dungeons, and it's very, very simple. Plus you can do it on a million different characters if you want to. There's actually a max of 18 characters in the Elder Scrolls Online, so if you're low like me and you need to theory craft a new build, I'm constantly running through doing these random normals. Gold, experience points, transmutes, it's incredible. But there is actually one thing better, believe it or not. In our number one position, we have crafting writs. So if you don't know, at level six, your character can start doing crafting writs. There's two vendors in your main starter area. This one here, Milneth, and another one in the Mages Guild. This allows you to start working on the quest. You do an introductionary quest, it teaches you. It teaches you the basics of the profession and then allows you to pick up the crafting writs. There's actually one more if you have the DLC or you're an ESO Plus member, and that's in Somerset, Alanor. There is a jewelry crafting writs vendor and location. That's probably the most advantageous and what makes the most gold. So step one is to unlock it on every character level six or higher. And then every day, you're going to walk through and do what I'm about to show you. So here we are in Morrowind Vardenfell, my favorite thing in place to do crafting rates. The reason why is all the vendors here in uh, Vardenfell, Morrowind, the top uh, right of your map, are right by each other. So all the crafting stations and the turn in. So this is what the crafting writ board looks like after you're certified with your individual professions. You can see on the board, it talks about which professions you get which. And there's another one. We're going to just mount up and show my really cool mount here that I earned with endeavors, blah, 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 and get the consumable ones. Another three here, provisioning, enchanting, and alchemist. Now, I haven't even done the jewelry one on this guy, bad deltia. Otherwise, we could pick up that as well. And now you come to the individual crafting stations right here. And it's going to ask you to do uh, a couple of different tasks. So craft normal hum homespun shoes, hat, sash. There's a helpful add-on on PC that just makes life so incredible. Dolgon's Lazy Writ Creator. Another one called Writ Worthy. I'm going to turn both those on and show you how fast this makes this. Yeah, we got that crafting writ add-on added and we pull up to the crafting uh, clothing station and it literally just crafts it all for you and puts it all in your bag. So you don't have to scroll and click, okay, I need, you know, this homespun shoes and I need this medium armor thing and I need these ingots. Basically does it all for you. Okay, so then you just rotate around and go to the various stations, just doing this on each and every character. And it only takes you probably less than 20 materials to do this. And it starts paying for itself and it starts becoming much, much easier because it'll give you more materials as you do it. Let me explain. All right, now we got most of those done, so I'm just gonna mount up here, go to Vardenfell and turn these puppies in. Do to do, do Now, when I turn them in, it's gonna open it. You're gonna see in the bottom right, clothing, sash, gold, and experience. Again, as a level six, you can actually level up entirely through doing crafting writs. Blacksmithing, and it levels up the skill line, gives you a ton of experience. 
Here we go. It starts opening. In the bottom right, you can see gold, experience, and it opens them up. Flax, jute, sanded maple, sanded whatever, uh, repair kits, ingots, steel ingots, and so on. So not only does it give you a ton of gold, it gives you these things here ornate. So you can sell that for a lot of gold. And you can actually max this up to 50 and get the end game item sets. So actually some people's play loops is actually maxing out their character, um, different characters and going to the craft skill. And actually if they have enough skill points, dumping 10 into every single one. So it's end game material and you can actually make even more gold. But we're not done yet. There's a bunch of other things you can get from doing crafting writs that would be its own guide. There's what's called master writs, which I don't even have on me on this account. But there's also survey writs. So what a survey writ is, is allows you to go on the map and collect enormous amount of that material. So you actually make a lot more material than you use and during every single writ. Gives you an abundant supply. Think four or five times the amount of materials. That's what it gives you. So on my main crafter here, King Full Test, if we go to the clothing station, after you get all the raw material, then you do what's called refining. So let's say I did a bunch of crafting writs and I refine this section here, 124. I got a Drew Wax. Drew Wax is extremely expensive. The gold master level quality, meaning the highest quality you can upgrade something is gold. Gives you the most bang statistical advantage out of your gear. You don't have to buy these. And essentially, if you get enough, you can start selling them, selling the material, selling the old ornates to vendors and selling the raw material or the excess material with guild traders and or to individual players and make a ton of gold, let alone the quest turn-ins. Completing all your daily writs on one character will net you 4,500 gold. Doesn't seem like a lot, but if you did it on every character, nine different characters, this would be 40K gold per day and over 1 million gold a month. Not to mention all the materials, supplies, and things you can get along with it, especially experience points. Not even mentioning master writs. It's the number one thing to do. And as you can see on a dead Tuesday, this is why so many people are in Vardenfell. Because crafting writs is the end game play loop in Elder Scrolls Online. It is the most lucrative and most beneficial thing you can do. Well, gang, that is the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Also consider looking at the link in the description below, nordpass.com slash gaming. If you want to use that code, it helps me out as a creator, helps you out protect your passwords online. And if you want detailed explanations on all of these specific areas of interest, I have written guides in the description below on each and every one of these things. Thanks for watching.